Hi, it's Andy from uh, PCR Global with one of my updates from what we have been up to. So, without further ado, let's get me out of the way. What's been going on in PCR lately? So, I'll fly past that. There's a couple of photographs before we kick off. The guys have been out on site, site visits, and the courses are extremely, we're extremely busy at the minute. This, this is John out on site. Um, this is myself. I've been teaching the Corporate uh, Risk Essentials, the IOSH course. Fantastic cohort. Some really great feedback about that, but one enjoyable course to teach. So we have got one coming up this weekend, and I believe also maybe the following weekend or the weekend after that. But really, really good course. Fantastic amount of knowledge in the room and there's always uh, a lot of pressure on anybody as a tutor especially when you're teaching to sort of peers and these guys in the room here were absolute professionals in their own right so it made for a really interesting session so we have john again i believe this is an smsts that he was teaching both john and phil really busy with our smsts course and it's fantastic because we're teaching across the country with this now um and everybody is sort of really happy with the access that they've got to the learning zone so the learning zone is really um coming into its own ian managing safely we are teaching managing safely on a weekly basis now so that's quite a full course there that ian's got and i believe also this is one of john's managing safely courses that he was doing what have i been up to so i've been on a lot of projects lately but i'm really missing developing some of the the training online training the free stuff i love it so i've spent the weekend putting some hazard identification slides together i've taken a lot of slides from um the 31 well one or two of the slides from the 31000 course that i'm developing but i've also just taken slides from previous courses that i've given so i think when this is done and it should be done tomorrow or maybe the day after then it'll be a good little free free course for people to do and i've really um i really enjoyed putting that together what else have i been doing thinking along the lines of the auditing i've been doing lately and looking at a lot of the information on linkedin where security um, professionals practitioners security managers call them what we want uh, are currently undergoing their own study they're on their masters or their bachelors so it's it's I think it's fitting just to point out for those who are into security the British Standard sixteen thousand one six zero 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 two thousand and fifteen for security management strategic and operational guidelines. It's quite easy not to even know these exist. If you don't know that they exist, it really is worth. Um, knowing they exist and um, not just that obviously knowing the content fantastic if you are undertaking some study you can use it as reference material of course even better than that if you have your own security company or you're, you're an avid study you, you like to study security then look what you've got in here organizational context we've got the security framework we've got the security risk assessment implementing security solutions implementing the security program then a little bit more about security solutions such as physical technical manned security information procedural asset management personal security security and procurement really interesting really good document it's only 30 pages long but there's a lot of good stuff in here and again you can do all the security courses you want these documents really do help and they help conceptualize a lot of the stuff that you learn on the courses. One thing I'm always wary of is basically learning from just some uh, some individual. Um, of course, there's a lot to, lot to, we can learn from individuals, but when you have a standard like this that puts it all together, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. And it's quite interesting. When you go on LinkedIn and you see the conversations, there is a lot of personal opinion. Of course, like I just said, that's good, but it's not many people referencing standards. And I genuinely believe, due to the consulting and the auditing and training that I do, it's because people don't know they exist. And if you do know they exist, they really do they really do um help you um with your conceptualization of security be able to put it together as a framework so the standards i've got up here they're actually they're just there because <coughs> excuse me because i was using them for that hazard identification p 
piece of training that I'm putting together that will be going out free of charge. So the other thing I wanted to talk about, because this is going to be a, a brief update, I want to link uh, a HSE prosecution, or link this HSE prosecution to the world of security. So what is this prosecution? It's very recent, 31st of March. The school were fined after a member of the public sustained a fatal head injury fall. So let's have a look at what happened here. So basically, a member of the public tripped over a low retaining wall and then sustained a fatal head injury. Peterborough Magistrates Court heard on the 17th of February 2007 a family member attending the school to watch a performance. While walking towards the hall, the woman tripped over a small retaining wall and fell to the ground, sustaining a serious head injury. Unfortunately, she died six days later. What's this got to do with the security? As we can see here, the HSC is saying that the school had failed to ensure the area was adequately lit. So, lighting surveys in security is really important. Really important you undertake a lighting survey. And just looking at, you know, the outcomes, what can happen here, it is down to lighting. I believe I'm taking it that this this is potentially a photograph afterwards. I'm not sure. But there you can see that the actual retaining wall is lit and there is a handrail there. I do not know if that was is, is the scene of the incident whether that was before or after. I mean, if it was before, then I'm looking at that. That looks well lit, and it does look like it's got a handrail there. So I don't think that is before. But let's link that back to security. So security, lighting. And that's then going to take us into the book section. You know, I like to have a look at books. So let's pick a good book out, The Management Handbook for Corporate Security. If we click this book open, and then we just go back to the cover, so you can see the cover. I really do, I really do like this um, this book because um, the authors they actually walk you and talk you through how they've actually implement implemented a corporate assets protection program. Really good. But let's put light in. in. Light in should come up. Let's click light in. Oh, excuse me. I'll bear with. Lighting. Thirty-five matches. Let's have a look. Reduces the possibility of accidents. So just by clicking in here and have a look at what it says about lighting. Let's have a look. Lighting serves several purposes. Adequate lighting reduces the possibility of accidents and injury. It also serves as deterrent to would-be intruders. With adequate lighting, the IWC, that's the Widget Corporation, the sort of the pretend scenario organization, um, the IWC grounds, fences, walls, and buildings can be clearly observed. So you can see a lot of information on lighting you and the types of lights. And if you go on a, a, a good security course, then ultimately, I'd imagine you will end up talking about lights. So, a very brief update, but linking some of the standards through to a lighting, and that's it. Thanks for watching. As always, don't trust it, test it, and I hope you had a good Easter.